start recording. Hello, I'm Timothy Hobbs, and today I'll be doing another session of live coding for Vegan Buddies. And um, what I'll start with is actually uh, sending out the announce on uh, to Element. Mm. Just a moment. Live stream number four. We're all the way up to live stream number four. That's amazing. Okay, so the announcement has been sent. I could do that on Facebook as well, but I'm not going to do it this time because last time the stream didn't even work, and so I don't see the point. Hopefully things will work out better, but I haven't yet quite solved the problem that I was having last time, which was that the CPU was too high and it just wasn't recording, it wasn't managing to record correctly. and. Ah, there's a huge echo, apparently. Um, so what can we do about the echo? Uh, is there an echo now? Is there an echo now? Is it better? Hello, hello? This is a test? Okay. So... Last time there was a big problem with the stream and the recording as well, that the stream was cutting out, it was freezing. And actually the recording was freezing too, and my computer was slowing, slowing down to a halt. And I've tried to solve this by ordering a um, recording card thing that allows you to record via USB on another computer. Okay, I'm being told... Uh-huh, there's... There's a delay, it's like two people are talking over each other, apparently. And what happens if I stop streaming? Is there still a delay? Is there still, like, two people? Now it should be like nothing, right? Show player? What? Okay, that's good. It seems to have stopped. And now, when I start streaming again, it should be working. Okay. Testing, testing. Oh, maybe, maybe the problem is... Does that make it better? How is it now? <laughs> okay, so, uh, as I was saying, uh, the, I bought a recording card that allows you to redirect the video through this USB device and I can do the streaming from another computer. So I can use up the CPU time on one computer to do the stream and use up the CPU time on the other computer to compile stuff. And hopefully that'll allow things to actually work um, without problems. 
I need to go ahead and hide the preview again to try to reduce the CPU as much as possible. I'm a little bit worried though because my laptop has a very quiet fan and my desktop computer has a very loud fan and I'm not really sure how that's going to work because the fan noise is a big problem for the microphone. Um, but eventually I'll get it figured out. And today I'm going to be working on uh, trying to finish up getting the Docker environment that I was using last time, or that I was setting up last time, the Docker environment for the backend matrix bot to work. So just to remind everyone or anyone, since there's two viewers, uh, well, no, there's zero viewers right now. Okay. Just to remind myself that uh, of what we're doing. So vegan buddies, read me. So the architecture is going to be that we're going to use lobsters as a uh, authentication service and matrix as an authentication service as well. And we're going to store some metadata about users in this backend, the user index, that'll allow us to query users by geographic location. That's the main purpose of the user index. And the other main purpose of the user index is that it'll allow us to um, sol uh, store uh, user ratings. Because, yeah, we have to store it in some place that can't be edited by the users, so we have to have it in a third location. Um, the user ratings, that is. If we were to have them in the lobster's profiles, then the users could edit their own ratings, which would kind of be against the point. So we have to store their user ratings in the user index, and we need to store the geographic locations in the user index to allow us to query users by geographic location, because otherwise there's no way to ask which users are close to me. So the user index is written in Rust, and I've I haven't really started writing it yet, but I've started creating this matrix geographic user index uh, crate and or program. And I want to develop that in a Docker container. And I've created this Docker compose file in this Docker file. And um, I'll go ahead and open up the Docker environment. And if I remember correctly, what I was struggling with last time is I was struggling to get um, what the heck? Driver failed programming external connectivity on endpoint vegan buddies. Let's try that again. Failed to locate port. Uh-huh, port is already located. Docker PS, yeah, okay. So the problem is that I was doing some development work earlier on h here, and I need to do docker compose down to get that port free. And maybe even Docker Compose RM, but I think that it suffices to do Docker, Docker Compose down. I really need to, I really wish that that recording card had come in the mail by today because it's really very slow. It's much slower with OBS running than um, without OBS. And so this is actually, the stream is hampering my development. Let me go and check if having the Twitch stream manager open is on, isn't perhaps also causing me problems. Uh, because at least that is something I can close. H top. I won't be able to see chat if I do that, but so right now I'm at 40% CPU on all CPUs, and what is using that CPU? 
Reach top is not working. I'll try top. So OBS, QMU, and web content is using 14%. Um, so I guess it's mostly OBS that's taking up, uh, it's taking up two full, more than two full CPUs. Uh, so there's nothing I can really do about this. There's no point in closing Twitch over that. Okay, so anywho, um, I want to launch the Docker setup, and then I want to try to use Cargo to, uh, build the dependencies that I've uh, gathered. So I've gathered um, in cargo.toml diesel and matrix bot API. And last time I was struggling to compile those. And we'll see if I can't do so now. So we're using develop.sh to launch Docker. This time it works, luckily. And then we can go to uh, CD matrix geographic user index, which is this matrix bot that we're developing to query users by their location. Uh, and we can do cargo build and we'll see if it ever finishes. The other thing that I was struggling with last time was that when I was doing cargo build and I reload, reloaded a container, I lost the index, the crates.io index. And that's obviously really um, inconvenient because I don't want to be fetching that over and over again. And I don't know why it's losing that index because when I go to this Docker Compose YAML file, um, I have home mounted. I don't know where Cargo is storing its cache, uh, but you would think it would store its cache in the home directory because it doesn't require any um, permissions but I wasn't able to find where it's storing that index and where it's storing its cache. I would think it would either be in the PWD or the CWD, the current working directory, or it would be in home or temp or something. But I wasn't able to find out where it was storing that and it's getting lost every time the Docker container is destroyed. And so I'm confused about that. I'm actually not sure if port Postgres needs to have this port exposed because I'm linking Postgres. I guess I might have exposed the Postgres port actually because I wanted to use um, DB Beaver. Yeah, that's almost certainly why I exposed it. I wanted to use DB Beaver to be able to explore the database. And I might actually want to install DB Beaver again, because I'm going to be using a new uh, and set up DB Beaver for this database because I'm going to be using a new way of dealing with Postgres databases. I'm going to be using Diesel, which I've never used ever before. I guess I should go ahead and I should find, uh, try to figure out where cargo stores uh, it's cache. Maybe I could even do that by looking on my main computer because I have
It's not in dot cache. Um, hmm. It's bizarre. I have no idea where, like, it's downloading all this stuff. It has to do it somewhere, right? And each time I come up with one of these things where it failed to build some package and I need to install the system package, I have to restart Docker and uh, so I need to install a system library, I need to restart Docker and then I have to start this whole process over again. And I don't want to start the whole process over again. I don't want to be down uploading crates.io index every single time. So I guess here there's this build directory and hypothetically that could be, it looks like there's a lot of stuff being downloaded here. So maybe that's where the index is being downloaded to? I don't know. But you would think that the index would be somehow global to the system because the index is going to be the same everywhere, right? But here in the home directory, it's not creating anything. It's not creating any, like, cargo cache or anything like that. Where does cargo store the index? By default, cargo home is located in home.cargo. Please note that the internal structure of the cargo home is not stabilized and may be subject to change at any time. Um, okay, I guess one thing that we can try, home test. Cannot cd to dot cargo no such file or directory. Can we make dir? Okay. If I go to VB again, and I go to matrix, and I go to cargo build without restarting Docker, it doesn't um, rebuild the index or re-download the index, which is good. So it is stored somewhere, I guess. I mean, it's not like it has a daemon running here that would be storing it, so it must be storing it somewhere. So what's the name of it? Um, or what's the name of some file in the cargo index that I could start f search for? config.toml uh, dot crate crates.toml perhaps bar grep crates.toml it's not finding it crates.toml is not it's not in the so there, there is no crates.toml file
config.toml. I'll just try searching for toml files. How many toml files can I have in a completely clean user local cargo registry? Uh huh. <clears throat> Uh huh. There's this user wrote local cargo registry file folder. Why? What the? F why the? Why? 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 User local is not a. Is it? Maybe in Alpine Linux, user is a place to store user editable files. Like maybe that's why it's called user. It's not normally a place where. Mm-hmm. So that's where the index is stored. <clears throat> so I found the index and now the question is what should I do about this? Should I should I make it I guess user local cargo is it's not okay. So user local cargo registry is something that I should bind mount or I could like I can solve this by bind mounting that directory I can go ahead and do dot cargo registry and then user local registry like that and then in the make file I go ahead and do create registry so that it's owned by the user not root and then I can go cargo registry cargo registry user local cargo registry okay it doesn't look like I made any spelling mistakes and I can go ahead and do make docker compose and So now I do dot develop dot sh and now I'm going to have to rebuild the cargo registry one last time and hopefully when I restart again it will work. Though actually I just remembered that there's this problem with Alpine Linux which is that I couldn't find a specific file or system package there and I might have to switch to Debian because of that. I don't know if I can find the name of the package in the scroll back or if it's not long enough. Nope, it's not long enough. So I have to go and I have to rebuild again. Uh, CD matrix cargo build. At least this time it won't be wasting my time because it'll <coughs> cache that index. Hopefully downloading this for the last time in my life.
Hopefully, once I get the 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 recording card or the capture card thing set up, I'll be able to actually do other things while waiting for things to build. It's like the computer's so slow, I can't even multitask. It's really, really interesting to me how how like the computer gets overloaded by a task like this. But I guess that's just how it is. When I do screen recordings without streaming, then it doesn't get overloaded at all. It's just the streaming that overloads it for some reason. So here we have the error that was challenging us previously. So go object 2.0 is, so we need to find the system library go object 2.0. And I'm not even sure, Tokyo Executor needs go object. That's really weird. Like what is Tokyo Executor even? I really don't understand why Tokyo Executor is something that I need that... So where is cargo? That's... Or crates.io? Okay, Tokyo Executor. Future execution primitives. And it has no readme file. That's extremely useful. In Tokyo, in the Tokyo execution models, futures are lazy. When a future is created, no work is performed. In order for the work defined by the future to happen, the future must be submitted to an executor. Okay. And why is this pulling in Go object, which is, I think, GNOME object, right? No, well, G object. G object. Is that not GNOME object? GNOME GTK. Well, it's GTK. I don't know. Is there some way to just like turn off the need for G object? No issues, either open or closed. Uh, now that's really confusing. Go object, G object, sys. Aha, uh -huh. I see. These are out of order. It's not Tokyo Executor that. So something is pulling in G object, sys. Is there like a cargo graph function? 
that I could then find well that seems a little bit overkill though dot files can be read by humans was there an this archived uh-huh archived uh, why is it archived is there some replacement Something in the issues explaining. Okay. So that looks like it's out of date, unfortunately. Cargo tree, maybe. bit of a misnomer unless they actually use a tree okay so now I need to find G object in here and try to figure out why fractal matrix API GIO uh-huh that's why so the networking for the fractal matrix API is using GIO. So that makes kind of sense, I guess, because it allows for portable IO, I guess. <clears throat> so I need to figure out how to get G object sys to build on Alpine Linux. Well, maybe try without the two there in case there's some like formatting issue that's causing this to not come up with any reasonable results. IG object three. Okay, I think we need to give up on Alpine. It's smaller, but it's worse than Debian, I guess. It's smaller because it doesn't contain the things we need. So, can Debian perhaps? Something like that. I guess we just try it and in the meantime I can go and actually look up on the interwebs what those packages are supposed to be called. So the packages are muscle dev Where am I? Packet.dev.org. It's a little bit weird that this search doesn't work. Search package directories. There we go. And uh, maybe I actually need libc dev rather than muscle dev.
and g object to dev. So g object to dev does not exist. And that's the error that it says. Rust Debian not found. What's this? Another problem with the stream? Oh, that's great. No, no problems with the stream. Okay. So I've also been doing a lot less building than before. So Rust Debian does not exist. So I need to go to hubdocker.com and find out what kind of Rust uh, images exist. Why? I don't consent. Essential cookies only. What? Okay, I, dis I disagree with that. Okay, G object. Oh wait, I'm not supposed to search for G object here, I'm supposed to search for Rust. And official image. Stream works fine, but the computer is slow. And what did I find out from the package search when I searched for GObject? So, what kind of tags do we have available? Buster? Uh-huh. That's interesting, but confusing. So I guess I want Buster? I don't know. Do I want Bullseye? I have no idea. I'll just try Buster. And there's no point in building it until I find out. Wait, Debian doesn't have any G object either. Okay. Now I'm super confused. Or maybe G object is G object dev is is in glib. That would make perfect sense. That I need glib, glibc. Maybe that's why, but glibc also doesn't have glibc documentation reference, glibc doc. Uh, I'm confused. Or maybe it's in GTK dev. I have no idea. I don't need anything to do with Python. So I guess I should search. So I obviously was confused about Tokyo. It has nothing to do with Tokyo. I was just confused by the order of things. So I want to figure out, I want to look at so, GIO, or was it? I want to look at the Rust Crate G GIO and find out if somebody hasn't asked about this question on GitHub or whichever 
social coding site they use. GIO cargo. It includes the space. That's kind of funny. But it worked. So G GIO and it's on GitHub. It's generated using a Python script. That's kind of funny. But do they tell you how to build the thing? That would be too and too useful, wouldn't it? The Rust, the GTK RS core repository contains Rust crates for additional G object based libraries. However, there is a large ecosystem of G object libraries, and many of these libraries have Rust bindings based on the tooling included in GTK RS. Of particular note, GTK3 RS, GTK4 RS, GStreamer RS. Um, so. Maybe if I search here, G object seventeen open so ten closed. That looks more likely that I might find some problem with building. So in the open issues, there's nothing, which kind of makes sense because usually build issues are closed immediately. Uh, nobody's ever had a problem building this. That's bizarre. Okay. So I'm the first person in the history of GTKRS um, who's ever had a problem building this thing. I'll try the docs, whether the docs aren't somehow, like, whether there's not amazing docs somewhere else. There's actually a home page. They they got their own domain. It's funny because I'm not doing anything with GUI development and yet I'm still still suffering with this, struggling with this. Okay. Maybe I have to read a book. <laughs> or maybe the GI, maybe these docs would help because I'm trying to build GIO. Okay, 
so they don't say anything about what you need to... GTK installation instructions, that looks really important. We're really hopeful. Wait, that was completely useless. That was completely useless. I don't care about that. I don't even know what version of GTK they're talking about, since GTK has different versions. Okay, so maybe I'll just try searching. I don't remember where the Debian package search thing was. Um, GTK. This is going to be a very long list of packages. And what's the chance that there's some like GTK dev or something? Wait, it's that short? Interesting. I keep on watching live streams in which people just start up and everything's installed and it's just like you know that that poor person like spent hours and hours trying to get everything set up and they didn't want to put it on the live stream or they didn't want to put it on the stream because they were too embarrassed or they thought it would be boring but that's like what programming is all about is trying to figure out how to build stuff that other people wrote. Um, so we already tried searching glib and didn't get anything we tried searching for gtk I can try searching for gio there's really no way to I guess I'll just blindly search the web for things. GNU Linux.
libgtk. Wait, I'm really confused now. I searched for GTK and I didn't find anything, right? And now it's saying that I need to install libgtk for dev, and it says that it's not f available. Super confused, but I'm going to try it. I'm desperate. The other thing I was working on last time was trying to figure out how to get that build context down. I added a bunch of stuff to the docker ignore file and it just seems that build context is random each time. But maybe it's higher this time because I added that new mm, directory, the cargo re registry directory and I didn't add that new cargo Uh, registry folder to the docker ignore file so I'm gonna try doing that now cargo registry Okay, now it's downloading Debian. And of course, I can't find those. Okay. So maybe. Wait, what should I do? I should. I should create a new file. Double CP. like that and then I should wait I just lost those changes but I can I can undo that so I can go ahead and git checkout docker file this is great that I committed that and of course git is great and now I can try alpine I can see if I can't find a way to install GTK on alpine GTK
No item found. Star GTK star. Okay, that was a little bit better. It's a lot. I'll try star GTK minus dev to see if I can get that down. Two. Nope. Now I'm confused. Is there really no GDK dev file? Okay, I'm gonna try star GDK star dev. Mostly the same results. Only five pages instead of seven, which is a surprisingly low, small change given that I added a word. So maybe GDK 4.0 dev is what I need. Can't. I'll try that. Can't kill me. So did there was there any change in so last time we had a 618 megabyte context and this time we had a 435 megabyte context so maybe adding it to maybe adding that registry directory to the docker ignore helped glib dev hey that looks like it's very very promising i think actually we just needed glib dev <clears throat> i have a good feeling about this but maybe it'll just Air out on another error next next round. Okay, so now I can try dot develop dot sh. And I'll try running the cargo build command again.
And it does appear that things are much faster now, which is great. And GIO Sys actually did compile, so it seems like we solved the problem. It says the stream is unstable. Um, So, <laughs> yeah, right now the stream is kind of boring uh, because we're just watching the compilation run. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm getting shame for using Twitch when I could be using something more, more like non-mainstream, more freedom-loving, like pure tube, which is probably true. I see that when I announced the stream, I, I wrote our third live coding session when it's already our fourth. I need to be better at updating those things. No! Okay, wait, these are actual errors. Okay, that's a, excellent. That means that the dependency is built correctly. Errors in my code rather than their code. What am I setting up? I'm s yes, I'm setting up uh Well, I'm not setting up a matrix instance. I'm setting up a matrix bot. Uh, if... I show you the readme, then here the, uh, I want to create a system so that you can look up vegans that are close to you, experienced vegans that are close to you. And Matrix doesn't have a good way of searching users geographically, so I'm creating a Matrix bot that allows you to setting, send it a latitude and longitude and find uh, the users that are close by that have registered as vegan buddies and also see their ratings and see ratings also for people who are wanting help so that we can like deal with potential sexual harassment problems and such in the future um so where was it i so I got to the point where I was actually getting errors in my code rather than um, the dependencies just not compiling, which is a great thing. And my code actually doesn't exist yet. This is just code that I've copied from somewhere, uh, which is obviously the reason why it doesn't work. Uh, why doesn't it go to open there? So it's saying So yeah, so I can start editing this main file. Which is currently a copy pasta. And I don't know what, is it clap that, yeah, clap that um, I need to process command line arguments and hypothetically this should be in the, I guess I should be actually commenting out code rather than uncommenting code till I get to something that builds at least. So it was complaining here that in aging seller mod rs there's something that it doesn't like, which is obvious because there shouldn't be anything there because the code is empty. And probably in work table, 
There's going to be some... Wait, I shouldn't have un... Ah! I shouldn't have deleted that. <laughs> okay, so... Can I undelete that? Git checkout. Um... I deleted the only thing that I'd actually edited. <laughs> That's kind of embarrassing. Really? Um, really? Yeah, I deleted the only file that was actually of interest. Good me. I don't think there was much there anyways. And I can't get it back because I had apparently never committed it to git, which probably suggests that it wasn't very interesting. I can cl close all of this. And does it build now? One last main.rs. Main function not found in crate. Uh, yeah, that makes sense because there is no main function. Um, I'll just fill in a uh, what should I give I guess I won't write any email I don't want people to write me emails so what does index and search matrix users by geographic location and add rating system there we go or I should actually write a matrix bot for indexing and searching matrix users by geographic location. And here I'll just delete all of this, I guess. And it can't find clap because it's not installed. So I need to go to cargo toml and add cargo toml and I need to find out what version of clap to use. Three point one point one clap equals three point one point one 
there a problem with the stream? Okay, it seems like everything is fine. And now... We rebuild again. And then we'll start looking at how to use diesel. Find an extensive get started use tutorial. That sounds nice. Wait, this is. That's not something related to the stream. Okay, now I've figured out how it works with the desktops. So, initializing a new project. Um, they wanted me to run their, like, cargo, uh, diesel um, setup command. And diesel CLI can set up, set everything up for us. Okay. So they want us to create a .env file that Mhm. Mm I presume that's something that should be in not committed to the <laughs> to the git repository. So it should be in git ignore and I think I already have a .env file. Maybe I don't need to. Dot. Nope. So I will Start by creating a .env example file, or wait, vegan buddies .env .sample, and then copy. Okay, so actually we'll, I'm not sure if we should put this in, I guess we can put this in a .env file directly in the matrix geographic user text. I guess that's actually the best thing to do. So I will put the sample file here, .env sample, and then I will cp env wait what just happened so rather than this our username is actually set <laughs> it's set hard in the docker compose file because here on a local machine it doesn't really matter user is vb password is foobar and 
the post is postgres or is it postkiss? I don't remember. Postgres and I guess I can go ahead and just call it diesel demo for now. And save that and do um, I'm going to go and git commit first so I see what changes this diesel setup command does. I have no idea what it's going to mess up. Wait, I should not have commit the .env file. In fact, I should add that to git ignore. Uh, so, So now we can do this diesel setup. Doesn't sound very eco. And it says that it doesn't like us, but hopefully this command will solve everything, right? I hope this diesel CLI thing does something useful because it's certainly taking enough time to build. Maybe I can go back to reading this, this tutorial, diesel setup. So in our case, we're not going to be creating posts. We're going to create three tables. We're going to create a table of users, a table which will contain the latitude and longitude of, the, of each user. We'll create a table of um, user reviews or user ratings, like that kind of binds users, one user to another. I don't know if there's a third table. Maybe there's only two tables, user ratings and users. Pretty sure there was a third table when I was thinking about this previously, but we'll start simple and we'll start with just the table of users and we're going to search those users. 
and we'll add user ratings later. So we at the first at the start we only need one table actually. And that will list so the I already have somewhere in the readme I think vegan buddies readme a list so latitude and longitude um lobster.rs address matrix.org so i'm going to go and write out the three tables so user table has three oh it has four columns basically because latitude and longitude test results and user ratings. Maybe I'll write it like that. something like that. So there's going to be a rating, a rated user, a rating user, and maybe notes. And this is going to be an int. Maybe I can do that. This is going to be a text. Uh, this is going to be an F foreign key relationship this is going to be a foreign key relationship and this is going to be a uh, so this is going to be user that did, filled out the test a car relationship And um, date, time, and this is an interesting question. If you have a test with multiple questions, then how are you going to store those uh, results? I think that I would have um, like grade, int, and answers as an JSON object. That seems like the most flexible thing to do. And loads char field max 255, I think. I don't know if matrix nix can be longer than 255 characters, but I'm going to just make it the maximum. I'm not really sure if it makes sense to have a, ma a char field, a fixed length char field with a maximum of 255 characters, given that I think in Postgres, the blocks are exactly 250 characters or 254. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I know it's some, somewhere around that. So are you like not doing the same thing as a text field in that case? Wouldn't it only make sense if they're like significantly smaller than 250? It's still building. Diesel. Ah, hell. So I'm going to start out by just generating one table, and that would be users. And I'm going to give it the columns that I listed in that um, in the readme. Maybe it's slower building not only because I'm doing the stream but because I'm 
typing. Maybe typing takes up a bunch of CPU. I have no idea. I have no idea what takes CPU. I do know that in Linux, um, when you're typing, it uses a different mode, some kind of different regime that has priority, which probably makes it slower. But hopefully next time things will be much, much faster. Hopefully I will have the capture card and the capture card will work. Maybe I'll try out that um, that other service, uh, PeerTube. Let's see if PeerTube works. Error? What? Error? Is that, that's not fair. Wait all that time for an error? Cannot find minus LPG? Collect two error LD returned exit one status? Um. What? That is a weird error. Let's see what the interwebs have to say about that error. The L name of the library. Uh-huh. Well, that would s explain something. So it can't find the PQ library. Okay, that would make more sense. Uh-huh, okay, so I need to go and Alpine package search and find the PQ library. star pq star dev like that wait not pk pq i think it was lib pq dev that looks promising wait <laughs> i i'm used to an alacrity that you have to type control shift C in order to copy and then in the web browser I've pressed control shift C and I'm surprised that the development tools open up. So here in the docker file I'll add that. I'll go and do uh, make docker compose again. And this will definitely be the last thing I do in the stream because I've been streaming for an hour and a half and I promised an hour and a half week of streaming to this project and I'm tired. So this time the context is even larger. Is it just random each time? I'm really confused by that. I wonder if there's a way to like see the context, the build context that it's setting over. It's absurdly large now. Has it gotten larger because it was building stuff? Perhaps the target directory is not getting ignored correctly?
I wonder if there's a good way to, like, add packages to Docker images without having to rebuild the entire Docker image and not just, like, adding random lines to the end of the Docker file. That would really speed up these kinds of development things. But I don't know of any good method of doing that. I think that the Docker file format, which is linear, is probably not very, not very uh, great for actual practical building. I think that we'll need to replace that file format at some point to speed up this. I think at some point you'll have some kind of like build matrix thing that you'll check off which package that you need and there's going to be some service where there's going to be pre-built docker images and it builds it for you based off of your parameters. Uh, if it doesn't have it cached and if it does have it cached you'll just download that image perhaps or not de not perhaps definitely with some uh, content addressable deduplication system so that it takes up very little di space on your disk um, so matrix and then I want to I was doing cargo install diesel CLI and I'll see if this works this time Well, this is building. I'm going to go and use the restroom.
Oh, I had the I had the microphone off all this time. <laughs> okay. I need my my girlfriend to tell me these things. Thank you. So, I lost a little bit of uh, the speech there. So, at least here it actually seems to have, but I don't, I'm not interested in this actually. I'm looks, I, I want the postgis. point. And I, I, I'm actually going to start out by not um, adding these points because I want to get going as quickly as possible. And I know that you need to load the PostGIS extension. And so I'll leave that for the next stream, I guess. Um, maybe I'll just stop with... Committing this, oh, or I'll do two commits to be clean. And now I'm curious about this diesel CLI, what it's going to do. So I'm going to end the stream by running a diesel setup. Segmentation fault. That's not very promising. Okay, I'll leave that. I'll leave the stream with the segmentation fault. Okay. So the audio was cut out for a little while, but it, it's not so such a problem because the stream was kind of boring. So I'm going to sign off now. So next week I'm going to also be doing this stream at the same time, 6 p.m. on Tuesday, 6 p.m. CET. That's um, 5 p.m. UTC. And... Uh, that would be 1700 UTC. And next time I'm going to be trying to set up the tables in diesel and try to get some kind of interaction with the database going. So I'll see you next time.